I want to talk a little bit about the challenges and perspectives of political culture. And I start with this graph. In the coming decades, this graph will drive the world. We have to go to zero CO2 emissions, zero emissions by 2050. Since the Paris Agreement, the world has a simple and common goal to limit climate change to two degrees and preferably to one and a half degree. The IPCC 1.5 report spells out what this means for greenhouse gases. We have to be net zero by 2050 with respect to CO2 and a net sink after 2050. Methane and nitrous oxide have to be reduced less because of food security reasons. Either we follow this course that IPCC has indicated and change our entire economy, or we will face ever bigger natural catastrophes, what we call natural catastrophes, but they are actually homemade by climate change. Climate change will be accompanied by decreased food and water security, growing social breakdown, conflict and migration. And in order not to be changed for the world, for the worse, we have to change ourselves. We do have a coherent strategy. The world ha has accepted, decided on the sustainable development goals, ambitious but necessary for justice for the future. And we have a program, a climate program, with worldwide wall to wall support. Here, John Kerry under signing the Paris Agreement with his granddaughter. Now we have to change everything, everybody and everywhere. That means that we will lose familiar landscapes. Cows on drain peat are over and out. Hay from drain peatland, over and out, finito. Potatoes from drain peatland, over and out. Carrots on drain peatland, over and out. Forests on drain peatland, over and out. Oil palm on drain peatland, over and out. Pulpwood on drain peatland, over and out. Drain peatland must be over and out. So we have to stop talking. We have to get our hands out of the pockets and close those ditches. Why do we do that? Because we know that drain peatlands have huge emissions and drain peatlands have an enormous effect on the emissions of food, a food print. The climate costs of drain, the peatland drainage are huge. When we use the official uh, data of the Environmental Office of Germany, uh, in the order of magnitude of several hundreds of euros per ton of avoided CO2, we have to come to the conclusion that in Germany, peatland agriculture causes annually a climate damage, damage of 7.4 billion euros. And for doing that, it gets more than 400 million euros European Union subsidies. The 7.4 billion climate damage actually equals the total net value added of total German agriculture. Agriculture is actually only stopping its own hole financially. In 25 countries of the world, the peatlands emit more than 50% compared to their emissions from fossil fuels and cement. So peatlands are there incredibly important for climate policy, including in Uganda. Drain peatlands not only are bad for the climate, they also create deserts, hopeless areas for plant production, with soils like made of stone. Drain peatlands also costs, cause emissions of nitrate to waters. In the European Union, we estimate this amounts to 3 million tons per year. That is equal to what 150 million people pee and shit. Drain peatlands lead to subsidence, the loss of height, 
This has been measured in many places like here in Bavaria and in the UK, three, four meters in only one, one and a half uh, century. And in the Netherlands, this has been calculated that the subsidence is responsible for 300 million annual damage to infrastructure and sewage systems. And that it until 2050 will lead to 80 billion euros of damage to houses. These are all uncalculated costs of peatland drainage. Peatland subsidence will in this century lead to the uncontrolled flooding from 10 of 10 to 20 million hectares of productive land worldwide. We are losing land now that we need it most. We know that rewetting solves most of these prob problems and it provides a lot of additional interesting ecosystem services. When peatlands are cool, they cool the landscape because more energy is needed for evaporation and less is available for heat. Rewetting of peatlands means climate change adaptation. Wet peatlands remove nitrogen very effectively and therewith purify and protect groundwaters, river water and seawater. Peatlands may absorb high water events and reduce peak flow, which will also be a climate change adaptation against increased heavy showers that will occur. And rewetting, last but not least, creates new opportunities for nature. Rewetting in Europe has hitherto focused on the easy stuff, abandoned and low productive land with few emissions. The costs I have just been calculating for the Ramsar guidelines on global peatland rewetting are averaging worldwide on approximately 2,500 euros per hectare, the investment costs for rewetting. So that means that rewetting all peatlands of the world will cost technically only 125 billion euros, what is peanuts compared to the money that we now spend for fighting COVID-19. But these are merely the technical rewetting costs of planning and building dikes and dams. What about the opportunity costs of rewetting the hard stuff, intensively used agriculture and forestry land? That of course strongly depends on land use. But if we assume an added value of 500 euros per hectare per year, reducing one ton, uh, gigaton of CO2 equivalents would cost approximately 25 euros per ton avoided CO2. So this price is not exuberantly high. This is feasible. But the problem is nobody is going to pay this forever. It is not a permanent base to base peatland wetting and polluticulture on. In 2050, the offsets about which everybody is reading will be uh, is, uh, talking will be over. Because if everybody has to go to zero, no offsets will exist anymore. We all have to go to zero, including the peatlands. CO2 must be zero as the graph sets in 2050, and it must be a net sink after 2050. But we cannot flood all drained peatlands worldwide. We also need production for all kinds of reasons, for the poor people, for the more people, and for uh, uh, replacing all fossil uh, resources by renewable biomass. So we need polluticulture. Polluticulture is thus not about an alternative crop. It is about the change we need and the future we want. The question, can we grow, has largely been answered and will be answered further in this symposium. Now, the more important question is, can we sell peatland rewetting? Can we sell polluticulture? Let it be clear, polluticulture can, under similar conditions, not compete with conventional agricultures. Farmers are no fools. If it would be more cost efficient, everybody would do polluticulture. It is not. Polluticulture must thus focus on markets for which it is intrinsically better positioned. And there are three strategic areas, climate impact, structure of plants and ingredients. 
Polluted culture provides renewable resources with negative emissions when rewetting is included in the final product. As we have already heard, companies, institutions and countries are outbidding each other to achieve zero emissions faster. They need offsets or better insets. An example of our Malheen heating plant. Malheen has a negative emission of 0.95 ton CO2 per produced megawatt hour. A negative emission. Building material from polyculture leads to negative emissions of 0.65 tons CO2 per cubic meter reed insulation board. Substrate for, for horticulture, peat from peat extraction emits 200 kilogram CO2 per cubic meter. Peat moss from polyculture, when done well, will lead to negative emissions of 140 kilogram. That is one of the futures we have to take. <clears throat> the annual voluntary carbon market has been slow and low until recently, but currently it starts to grow. It is expected that <clears throat> the demand for voluntary carbon credits could increase by a factor of 15 <clears throat> by 2030 and a factor 100 of, by 2050. And indeed, prices start to rise rapidly in the last months. But demands should fade out by 2050 because everybody has to be on zero. So we need alternative income for polluting culture. This could be negative emissions. Growing peatlands indeed sequester carbon, but not much, but carbon will be, become very expensive. So peatlands may contribute to real negative emissions. <clears throat> but we have to think about new markets, about the excellent structural properties that polluted culture products may have. It has to do with wetland plants. They are exposed to much greater force, forces than terrestrial plants because water weights more than air. So they build very strong structures. Because they root underwater, they, where they also need oxygen, they have erenchyma, uh, uh, <clears throat> air conducing tissue. Uh, they have to have that without weakening the structure. So they make strong, light and open structures and create climate friendly building material <clears throat> with very good insula insulation properties. Wetland plants are most important lightweight building materials. New markets will also include ingredients of wetland plants. Helophytes in water are strongly attacked by fungi and other microbes. And therefore, they reinforce their tissues with silicon and produce fungicides, etc. The uptake of silicon also leads to the uptake of related elements such as germanium and rare earths, all things that are rare. And the pro protective agents often have a medicinal effect, like Drosera illustrates. We should also think about phytomining of phosphate, a strategic fertilizer. So we think of phytomining and biorenewables from uh, <coughs> polyculture plants. <clears throat> Not for nothing, wetland plants, strong and with these fungicides, are the world's most important building raw materials. We can use millions of years of evolutionary selection. Paris implies for the world <clears throat> that we have to rewet 500,000 square kilometers of drained peatland until 2050. Or say it in another way, Germany has to rewet 50,000, European Union 500,000, Europe 1 million, and the world 2 million hectares per year. Everybody says, <clears throat> when I said rewet 500,000 hectares per year until 2050, that is illusorious, that is naive. But then I reply, Finland in the 1970s drained 300,000 hectares every year. <clears throat> Indonesia has in the last four years rewetted 4.4 million hectares of peatlands. This is 20 times much as entire Europe in its entire history. We need to learn from Indonesia. They can do things better, but they are worldwide the best example of large rewetting in existence. We in Europe live at the best time in history on the best place on earth. 
If we cannot manage, who can? More must not, we say in Germany. Und zwar sofort, immediately. Peatlands must be wet for the climate, for the land, for the people forever. There will be no Paris without peatlands, but culture for future. Thank you.